How you guys doing? Welcome back. Um, today I'm actually going to do a little Bible study with you guys. God gave me a message, um, a whole a message and a revelation that he wants me to get out. Um, this isn't going to be like a live Bible study. This is going to be like it was a couple of months ago. Me just giving a study to you guys. So welcome back to that. Um, today we're going to be in Romans. We're actually going to be in Romans and we're going to sit there and I'm going to share what God has given me for you guys. And it's, it's powerful, it's great, and it's awesome. So I pray you take everything to the Lord and, and that you pull up a seat, <laughs> bring your friends and family in and enjoy this study we're about to have. God is about to do something brand new and, and it's going to be beautiful. Okay, it's going to be beautiful. So in Romans 9, 14, I want to start out in verse 19 and, and just start reading. I'm going to start in verse 19 and then skip to 22. So in verse 19. Um, yes, my setup is a little different. I'm doing this on the fly. This isn't usual, but I have to get this out. So, um, in verse 19, it says, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one day, one may edify another. This is something that the church really needs to, to stay in. It needs to make their home in this verse to edify one another. The world says edify yourself, focus on you, focus on you, and focus on you, right? God is saying, no, you are to put your brother first. You are to put me, of course, as the pinnacle of everything. I am your everything. I am the one who is your Lord, your King, your Savior. I'm the one you go to. I'm your commander. I'm your lover. I'm your best friend. I'm your father. He is a guaranteed in the front. But after Jesus, God says, okay, now put someone else in front of you. Love someone else as you love yourself. Put someone else in front of you now. Okay? This is what God is commanding us. This is what God is telling us. This is what God is making a theme in our walk. Making a, a um, systematic system or blueprint or operation in how the kingdom works. The kingdom works this way. It's not a selfish kingdom that's just about you. It's about the next person. Okay? It's always about the next person. I guarantee once you get to heaven, you're going to see where people don't even want to do things for themselves. They're going to God to figure out, what can I do for somebody else right now? Who can I pray for? Is there someone else I can visit and bless them right now in their mansion? Okay? It's a different kingdom. It's a totally different operation God is wanting you to operate in. Okay, so I had to say this because this is literally the foundation for the takeoff we're about to take. <laughs> All right. So in verse 19, in my notes, I put that we do we're, we're supposed to do things to someone else's interest. Someone else's interest needs to be stronger than our interest. Someone else's want or desire or help needs to be stronger than our own want. All right. It's a unity of path. It's a unity of peace. It's a path of peace and unity. Understand? What was divided or fraying of something is the mending of it and the establishment of the connection, establish of the completed conclusion of what God intended. Okay? What God was showing me as I was reading this and even going into verse 22 Sticking in verse 19 really quick because I saw a vision after just sitting on this verse and meditating and receiving from the Lord. I started to see a fraying of a rope, okay? I see a fraying of a rope and I can understand as God is showing me this, that he's restoring what has been frayed. There has been so much fraying in the church. There's been fraying in the body. There's been fraying in the world. There's been fraying in relationships. There's been fraying in connection with God. There's been a misunderstanding of the connection with God. There's been a misunderstanding of how to operate in this love and the, the love of the Lord. So what he's doing, he's bringing it all back. He's bringing it all back, right? But it's once again, like we spoke about prior in a live Bible study, it's about the commandments. It's about your covenant, your mental agreement with the Lord. Your mental agreement with the Lord establishes these types of operations, right? The commandments give you an operation of not you, but somebody else after God. 
all right? We are to operate in that space and stay in that space. We're not to move away from that. God doesn't command to say, okay, do this for three months and walk away. This is just a commandment, <laughs> a permanent one, to edify one another, okay? As I was seeing this vision of this rope that was fraying, it had hundreds of frays, I said. It looked supernaturally that they are mended back together. It, it looked like there were so many frames. If you take a rope, I could see in the vision the details of all the hundreds of small little tiny hairs fraying off this rope. I could see it clearly supernaturally. Of course, with my carnal eyes, there's no way I could pick up on thousands or hundreds of fraying pieces of, of, of rope and uh, string, pretty much. But I could see it clearly in this vision. It was so clear. And as I was looking in this vision, I saw all this fraying somehow supernaturally get mended together. The fraying was so small that no man could do this. This was an this was a impossible feat for a man. There's no way. But with God, nothing's impossible. And I saw God without hands look at take all the fraying of a hundred pieces I saw so clearly and put it completely back into a rope like nothing had happened. And I see the strength in the rope, the power in that rope now, because now the power is weak. When you have fraying of a rope, the power is weak. You can't you can't operate in it. You can't trust in it. You can't rely on this rope to do its job. The connection isn't strong enough. The connection cannot hold or last. OK, this is what I was seeing in this vision. After coming out of this vision, God gave me more revelation. He showed me that edifying another is a language or a changed mindset or a new perspective that God speaks, that God operates in, and that God calls us to do the same. Remember, edifying another is another language. It's a different way of speaking. It's another speech. It's a different way of looking at things. You have to have a different perspective. It's a changed mindset. You're on a different operating system from beginning to end. Your thoughts from the start to finish aren't operating for just self. You are literally operating in, an, in, in another mind frame. A different perspective. Literally. Hold on to this because we're about to explode on what this different perspective is, how to get it, and how to just walk in it, and what God is about to do with this. All right? So in verse 22, sorry, I need to continue on verse 19. So we're talking about this new perspective, this changed mindset. They're going to be, there's, there's going to be a new perspective given where people will see God's perspective. I've been speaking about it for months, and I know I have. But we're getting into the space where God wants to share about it now. Okay, we're going to see a new perspective given when people will see God's perspective only God's perspective. It will literally be the moment you think to the moment you stop thinking. It's a, it's a flow of what he is thinking. It's a flow of what he is wanting. It's a flow of what he's desiring. He's no longer second. He's no longer on the back burner. He's no longer a debate, debatable desire. Of will. Will I do what the Lord wants me to do? Should I do this? No, your only will is, all right, God, I see that you look at this person and you love them. Your operation is this. I'm doing it. Beginning and end. That's it. Okay? Now, going on to verse 22. So we're seeing where God is putting us in this different perspective to increase and to build one another. He's a carpenter, right? What it doesn't make it like, yes, that makes rides right up his alley. It makes complete sense why he would do this. In verse 22, it says, Has thou faith? Have it to thyself before who? God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. Of course, in the context of this, they're talking about food. They're talking about how some people will want wine and want meat and how others will feel offended and it will hinder their faith. For you to eat around him with this type of food. All right. Literally. Of course, this is extremely symbolic. And I've done studies on the symbolic meaning of this before last year. But what I want to focus on here is that your faith is more precious than gold. And we know that. OK, your faith is more precious than gold. Don't leave it vulnerable 
to someone else's judgment. Okay? Don't leave your faith vulnerable to someone else's judgment when God is the only one who judges it and is the author and the finisher of your faith. There's no other equation in that. There's no other equation. There's no God is the author and finisher of your faith and that other people can judge your faith and influence it. No, that is not the case. God is not saying that. So we shouldn't walk that way. It should not be the case with us. That is not our portion to walk in. It's not our case. It's, not our, it's nothing for us to carry. It's never a burden for us. And we need to walk that way. This is our freedom walk. God has given you ways and methods to walk in freedom. Your faith is not to be judged by a man. God is the author and finisher of it. It is between you and the Lord for him to chastise, correct, refine, increase, shape your faith. That is personal with you and the Lord. This is why speaking in the spirit is between you and God. It's a mystery. So is your faith and it needs to stay that way. People need to see the evidence and the testimony of your faith. The increase in the building blocks and the, and the forming of it and the longevity of it and God writing your, the author of it. Simply what it is. That is not someone else's business to judge. We need to be very cautious and discerning. Our faith is more precious than gold. You wouldn't let someone touch a, a 10,000 gold ring and throw it up in the air and toss it around and judge it for you when you know God gave it to you. And you know the special and the, and the implications of it. No, you wouldn't. You would say, hey, this is something really special to me in this box. I, I know you, I, I'll let you see it, but as far as having and holding it, it's really dear to me and I'm sorry I can't do that. We all know, we've all had that thing. That was a family member that was so it had so much meaning behind it. Treat our faith the same way. Treat our faith the same way. And going on to verse 23, and then I'm going to skip to chapter 5. Verse 23 says, And he that doubteth, doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. 23 is talking about, of course, it's talking about food. Yes, it is talking about food. There's another layer with this, but it's showing you the implications of a vulnerable faith. It's showing you the implications of a vulnerable faith. It's giving you the understanding that, hey, my faith being touched hinders it, and therefore it becomes a sin because I'm not walking in that faith I used to walk in. God says never backslide from faith. God says continue to go forward in faith, and forward, and forward, and forward. It's not just a reason to, to increase you, oh, of course. Of course it is. But it's also a reason why is that there is a protection. A faith that's moving forward is a faith that's not vulnerable to get hit and come back. A faith that's moving forward is a faith that isn't vulnerable to be judged to then backslide because of someone else's judgment when God didn't say anything about your faith. When God wasn't judging your faith that way. When God didn't speak about it. But you heard another voice and said, okay, that's valid. Going on to chapter 15, we're going to start in verse 5. In verse 5, it says, Now the God of patience, consolation, grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. According to Christ Jesus, the way he did it, the way he thought, the way he operated, how he did things. The supernatural he moved in wasn't just from his hands and what his what his heart was. He had a perspective the whole time. He had the same thing about my father's business. I'm only coming to do what he says. And my perspective is I am so merciful and tender to these Gentiles. I'm so merciful and tender to whoever will come to me. That perspective of the net the person is first is what Jesus did. This type of connection he's going to do with the church. He's going to bring down denominations. They're not going to be existing anymore. He's going to make it to where through the Holy Spirit, people will see the heart of God. And through seeing the heart of God, they will have a new perspective from the encounter with the heart of God and move only by the beating of his heart. Okay, they will only move by the beating of his heart. Changing my notes here, going to go to the next page. 
in verse 6 it says that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ one mind and one mouth I don't need to speak much but I'm gonna say this with the same mindset and that same perspective right worshiping God in spirit and truth is by having the right perspective and mindset People want to know, how do you worship in spirit and truth? How do I pray in spirit and truth? How do I move in that spirit and truth level that God says in the word to do so? It comes to dying to your perspective first. It comes to letting go of what's in your heart's desire and having the willing to shift in mindset and in heart desire for what he's wanting in your life, for your family, for your friends, for that person beside you. For whatever situation you're going for, you're aligning yourself with his want. Then now, because his want is greater than your carnal want, it is now in a level of spirit and truth. God's want is. So you aligning yourself with God's want and spirit and truth and no longer in the limits of your carnal, you are now operating in a totally different frequency. You're operating in a totally different system. You're praying alongside a mass of God with power. You're aligning yourself with the power of the Almighty now. You're on a different lane, a different flow, a different connection, a power source that overpowers you consistently. You're residing in that space now. This is how you worship in spirit and in truth. You're worshiping in accordance and alliance to God. You're saying, God, align me to you. Fine tune me to you right now. And allow me to pray along that tuning. Allow me to pray along the tuning you're doing to me, your instrument right now. I want to pray along that. I want to worship along that. Help me do so, God. Ask for help to, for God to do so. and He will. He will help you. All right. In verse 7. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. This is the situation of the perception. The reception is to, is to perceive to the point to God. Get what I just said. Perceive to point to God. Let's read that verse. Wherefore, receive you one another. Receive someone, one another, as Christ also received us to what? God received us to the glory of the Father. He didn't just receive us, He didn't receive us to Himself and say, Cool, well, that's enough. God is receiving us to give the Father glory. He's receiving us and pointing. God receives you and points. He receives you and points. Who is he pointing to? The Father. We are to do the same thing in encountering someone. We're seeing the perspective of God he wants us to have us in. We're seeing the mindset God wants us to have us in. And this perspective and mindset is to see and point someone straight to God. You encounter this is how the operation of the body works. This is how the edification of the body works. This is how putting someone else first in the perspective of God first is. Remember, God is great. God is, he has, he owns everything. Every possession you have, God owns. So what God focuses on is getting people to know him. Because possessions is in his hands. No matter what you own, it's still God's. No matter how much money you have, that's God's money. Man didn't create it. God still is the creator. Okay? We're to receive to point to God. Do not receive from for your own gain or receive to step out at your perception or your reception. But to get them to the destination of God's reception. That is our purpose and that is our point. We are to receive people to get them to God's destination. It's not about receiving them to us and letting them stop at our destination. We need to say, hey, thank you for coming to me. I have another destination for you to go to now. Will you go there if you want to? Should you choose to? Great. But this is who I'm pointing to. This is who I'm going to point to. When, you're, when you receive me, you get that I'm pointing over here and I'm pointing you to them all the time. Right? This is where the persecution and reception and rejection comes in. In verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy, peace, in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Who? The Holy Ghost. Here we are getting to the nitty gritty. 
where, pe- where we need to have the Holy Spirit. You don't just need to have the Holy Spirit to carry the Holy Spirit as a counselor and a helper, but He changes your perspective. The Holy Spirit guides you to the heart of the Father. He guides you to Christ, but to see Christ better. He shows you that, hey, how about you put these glasses on from the Lord? How about you put on this helmet of salvation or this cap from God? Hey, your chest is open. How about this breastplate of righteousness, of faith? I see that the enemy's throwing darts at you. Here's your shield of faith. Oh, but you're a weapon. You can fight. Here's the sword of the word. But you have to refine and buckle yourself down in truth. Here's the, here's the belt of truth I'm giving you. Now you must walk in the gospel. You must walk in God's word. You must walk in this freedom. So here are shoes that will help you walk the gospel, the shoes of the gospel of peace to help you walk forward. So that you won't get tired. So that your feet won't get damaged because you're sur- your feet are surrounded by the gospel now. Now, in doing so, verse 13, God was also revealing to me is abound in hope and faith by the Holy Spirit, the leading and the counseling us on faith. The helper helps you get to the heart of God by helping your faith believe in the reality of his heart. So many of us struggle with believing the reality of God's heart when that's what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do. The Holy Spirit is supposed to show you God's heart. It's not for you. You don't have the capacity here to get it. This is why denominations form. They try to form up their own capacity. And you can't. You cannot get there. Only by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone can you have this revelation. Because it has to be revealed to you for you to understand. We are not that big. Humans cannot get it. Our, our brains, the capacity does not work that way. We need the helper. We need the helper. This destination and location where the perspective or mindset changes and alignment happens. This is where alignment happens. Is after the heart of God. Simulating and getting into that space where your desire is the hearts of God's desire. That's where alignment, mindset, and perspective change. Okay, in verse 20. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. There is a space or a lot, okay, for your ministry, for those who are out there, your ministry. There's a space for it that is untouched and but is prepared for you, okay? It's untouched and prepared for you to build. I know Paul was talking about, I will never step on what Jesus has done in his actions, Because once again, that was the property the father gave Jesus to work in, his field. Just like in Joel 2 where it says they they marched and didn't break their ranks. They didn't preach on anyone else's foundation. They knew the space of their ministry. They knew the space of their field to harvest. And that's what they did. This is the perspective. This is the perspective that God wants you in after moving by the Holy Spirit. It's about your business with the Father, not what someone else's ministry is doing. Okay? Understand that when God calls you to a ministry, it is untouched, but it is prepared and is waiting. It's just waiting there for you to build, to start it. Go into it with God and the Holy Spirit, of course. The same thing. Now, after reading verse 20, God just gave me a, a, just a revelation because I was just sitting with him and soaking all this in. It was such a big revelation. God was showing me that the perspective, that the love of the Spirit and the followers of the Spirit with free space for the Spirit, do, sorry, the Spirit is what causes the parameters that you see. I'm getting tongue-tied. The Spirit is, gives you the parameters. When you follow the Spirit and you're follow of the Holy Spirit, right? It's no longer your limits. As we know, He sets the limits by how. Only time we know the limits is when the Holy Spirit gives us instructions. And whatever instructions He gives is that's where the limits are established. Because God can do all things, period. So that's guaranteed. And so if that is guaranteed, that also means when we follow the the Father, when we follow the Spirit, 
it is guaranteed that there is no limits but what he states, okay? God wants you in a space of freedom. He wants you in this space of freedom to operate, no longer thinking carnally. This is the blessing of having a spiritual mindset and not the carnal one. The limitations don't exist, all right? This is why supernatural acts happen throughout the word of God. People listen by faith. God said this, and they just operated without any other hindrance, okay? Any other hindrance. So this is what the Lord wanted me to, to give to you guys, okay? Um, hold on one second. Sorry about that. I had to handle something. Um, but what I want to do now, now that I've shared that, and hopefully that, that really hit home, and I thank you guys for listening to this and just taking the time to receive this message. God gave me a word. And I'm going to share this word, and I pray that God moves upon everybody and helps them understand everything that he's saying, all right? So take this word and take it to the Lord. I did have visions in this, and so I'm going to stop and share the visions, but I'm going to keep on going as he spoke. So this is what the Lord said. He said, leave this world, oh, leave this world. The passion I have comes from the heart of God. I was writing so fast. The passion I have comes from the heart of God. My will protects, my will it covers. No weapon prospers when it goes forth. The, those waiting wait for me. I am coming. Those wanting truth to prevail, seek me and I will show. Truth comes, the darkness grows. I am not caught unaware of what is taking place. And then I saw a vision. I said, I see the hands and the arms of Jesus gathering and bringing his children closer. I saw where Jesus was huge and I saw little children, really, really tiny, but Jesus was massive on his throne. And I saw his arms gathering his children, like, like pulling them closer, but it was more like a covering. His arm will cover, but pull. And it was like this motion. And I saw the children of God, of course, coming closer to the center of him, like his chest area. And he was glowing. He had this illumination. Even the children of God had an illumination from God. And it was, and they had different robes on. There were different colored robes. Um, but these children were, were saints. So in this vision, I see this. Okay. Um, what else I see? I said he was bringing them closer to his heart. I see God bring. I see God bringing them closer so they can listen to God speak. I'm seeing God bring them closer, but I'm understanding he's bringing them closer so that they can hear him better. I see then the children praise, shout, leap, and celebrate. It was like as God pulled them closer, God said something to just these people, the saints who were there close to him. And after he spoke this, I saw little children leaping so high in the air. They were jumping 15, 20 feet, celebrating, shouting. I saw confetti. I saw hands raised. I saw people praising the Lord. I don't know what was said, but I know whatever was said was said to these select people. I knew that this was a group select. This was a group that, that was selected and chosen and decided to be there. This wasn't everybody. And I don't fully understand this part, but all I know is this wasn't everybody. It was a select group of, of saints. And whatever God had said after pulling them closer, they were in complete uproar and praise. Complete uproar. Okay? So I saw this, and I kept seeing saints jumping. I kept seeing celebration. I saw confetti flying up in the air from saints. I don't know where the confetti came from, but it was coming out. Okay? I said it was an incredible excitement. I said an incredible excitement, a cheering and a happiness. I said the plans of God are being spoken to them and incredible rejoicing is taking place. These are a small select group God is speaking with. God continued after this. He said, my word has power. My word changes any plan I choose. I am the I am. The darkness spews its lies. The time 
for the bringing in the sheepfold is coming to pass. He thinks, the enemy that God was speaking about, he thinks he has maneuvered himself to be successful. But nay, I say, my laugh continues with his schemes, plots, deceptions. Oh, truth will set you free. Sorry. The truth will set you free. My love has overcome all this world. I am your father. My provision is sustainable. My heart beats to my children. After he said, my heart beats to my children, I saw another vision. He, I see, sorry, before he said, my heart beats to my children, he said, come close and listen. And then I saw this. I see a giant heart beating. It was massive. It was gigantic. And I can hear it beating too. I heard the beat. It was massive. It was boom, boom. Boom, boom. As I was seeing God's heart beat, I see ripples, waves. These <laughs> God's heart was so massive. When his heart beat, the ripples of the vibration were like waves. They were moving off his heart toward his children. That every white wave, it was a white ripple. Every white wave was waving towards his children like whoosh, whoosh. Just kept going, just kept going. I saw the wave of his heart toward his children and it was just waving and hitting. I then heard, and this is the end of the word, the Holy Spirit came in. Because in this word, sometimes I can tell who's talking. This time Jesus was talking. Whole time Jesus. Sometimes I can tell it's the Father. Whole time the Father, sometimes. But this was, the, this was Jesus talking. When he finished, the Holy Spirit came in. And he said, be positioned for the wave. And that was it. Be positioned for the wave. So there is a massive wave coming. But the only the wave is coming for people who are already after the heart of God. If you want to know you're gonna, if you're going to receive this wave, this massive wave from God, this glory coming, be positioned in the heart of God. Be in position to go after the heart of God consistently. Those who go after the heart of God are the ones who receive this wave because they're in the position of his heart beating. They're in the position of his heart beating. Okay. Take this to the Lord. Let it bless you. Let, I thank you all for being here. I give all glory to God for everything. I love you guys. Be blessed and I'll see you on the next video.